I'm Deacon Dan Bournet of the Diocese of Baton Rouge, and thank you for joining us as we chat for a few minutes about two of our diocesan officials who are directly related to the response that we are making here in our diocese to the devastation of Hurricane Laura in southwest Louisiana and in other parts of our state. With us today, Father Ryan Halford. Father Halford is a parochial vicar at St. Aloysius Catholic Church here in Baton Rouge, and he is the diocesan co coordinator for the relief efforts that we are in the process of developing here in our diocese. And also with us is David Aguiar, executive director of the Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Baton Rouge. Ask David, first of all, tell us a little bit about the need in Southwest Louisiana. Your boots have been on the ground several times and you have seen the destruction and devastation there. Yeah, yeah, I've been there three or four times now since Hurricane Laura hit and the need is just absolutely overwhelming. Uh, there's a need for all the basic recovery items that are typical in an area after a hurricane or a natural disaster, tarps, cleanup supplies, personal hygiene items. There's also a tremendous need for volunteers. We don't really quite fully know the extent yet of, of what everybody's going to need because there's still lots of evacuees, some here in Baton Rouge who were helping out in some of the hotels here. Uh, but there's a need for volunteers as well as the typical items that are used after a, dis after a natural disaster. We are not unfamiliar with disasters uh, in Baton Rouge with the flood of 2016 and various hurricanes over the years. This particular hurricane had uh, a tremendous impact because of the wind damage uh, that southwest Louisiana uh, suffered yeah. and how many structures that have been uh, have been destroyed. Uh, Father Ryan, you have been asked by uh, Bishop Duca, and you have graciously accepted uh, the responsibility of uh, coordinating a diocesan-wide response uh, to Hurricane Laura. And there are a number of ways that individuals and organizations can respond. Could you walk through those with us, and then tell us particularly about the organization that you have offered and has been accepted in terms of the diocesan response. Yes, sir. So really, um, there's a multiple ways that we're trying to reach out and help out our, our brothers and sisters in, in those affected areas. Uh, first, the diocese is uh, on their website has the ability to donate and that money is going to go there. Catholic Charities also has a link in terms of supporting a lot of the efforts they're doing. Um, and then every parish is doing their own effort, but we really wanted to be able to bring a kind of a coordinated effort to make sure that we are, you know, as efficiently as possible to be able to meet the concrete needs as they arise in Lake Charles, to make sure that we're not just blindly sending items and, and help over there and it's going to just get in the way. We don't want to make anyone's life harder because, we, you know, we experience that well that those things can go smoothly and sometimes not. And so really uh, one of the things I've done is we've coordinated a, a basically donation and transport program in conjunction with Catholic Charities where um, different parishes are participating and collecting very targeted items that you know they're, they're going to collect and we have transportation are going to go to um, actual distribution sites that we have arranged with uh, church parishes on the ground and have distribution crews to make sure that's not going to be going to any kind of warehouses that's not going to be putting any um, extra work on their Catholic charities but going straight to the ground and directly to the people. Uh, the other effort that we have is I've created kind of a web page that's been shared. Um, it's been shared with all the Lake Charles priests and all the diocese officials. And, you know, as they go through, uh, as they go through those areas, they can actually submit concrete requests, you know, for demolition crews, for tarping crews, for, uh, for cooking crews, if they want to be a distribution site. And so we're getting really good information. We're taking it off the plate of their, their people over there. We're processing the requests and we're making those available to the parishes. And so really each parish can kind of go and the priest can see what the needs are and be like, hey, we, we're gonna bring a demolition crew, we're gonna bring a tarping crew, we're gonna bring a chainsaw crew, we're gonna general you know, maintenance crew, we're gonna bring a cooking crew and really be able to meet those needs as they arise from the particular people who need them right now. So individuals in our diocese can participate from the diocesan website mm -hmm. or from the Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Baton Rouge website or parishioners can go to their respective parishes here in the diocese, work with their priests, deacons, and parish offices mm -hmm. to see what they can provide parishes in 
the Diocese of Lake Charles. That's correct. And we're really encouraging all the priests to send to the people in the parishes who are kind of organizers. So your, your men's group, your prayer groups, your Bible studies, you know, any group that might be able to put together a crew or want to, you know, be able to respond concretely to those needs, you know, just approach your priests and deacons and, you know, maybe they'll be able to give you access to see which one of those you can, you can do and respond to. But really, we believe uh, as people begin thinking about how they want to go over and contribute to be able to have those concrete needs. That way they know um, that they're going to go over there and, you know, really being able to respond uh, to what's needed on the ground. And too. David and, uh, and Father Ryan, within our diocese, Many parishes are collecting some of the very things that, yeah. uh, that David mentioned. Uh, they're collecting those, and uh, then those are being uh, delivered to what we call deanery sites. Uh, deaneries are collections of parishes within the diocese, roughly geographically uh, oriented. And then at a specific time, that is being picked up by Catholic Charities, Correct. right? Yeah. So there is a supply yeah. chain that's in place. Again, uh, go to your parish. Check with your deacon, check with your priest, and you can get all the details. David, what happens once that uh, material, once those supplies, once they arrive with the Catholic Charities, what happens from there? Well, what, what we're doing, as Father Ryan mentioned, is trying to relieve the uh, overload of materials and supplies that flow into any area after a disaster. And I've been there, I've seen just you know, a lack of space at the Catholic Charities Warehouse. What we're trying to do is pick up the items here from the greeneries, and then through the, the priest communications, we're identifying specific church parishes that are ready for us to arrive with our trailer, and they have volunteers there to help us unload the trailer and distribute those items in their area. Um, and and it, what's really, I think, enjoyable and refreshing in this particular incident, if you can be at a time like this after that kind of disaster, is to see how the Diocese of Baton Rouge is working together from the parish level through the chancery, the deaneries, and involving Catholic charities as well. Each one has something to contribute to this process uh, and to contribute to Lake Charles. And doing it together is just really refreshing and uplifting for us. Uh, I, I would also add that, um, you know, needs change from week to week. And that's why our, we usually, F Father Ryan mentioned it, um, one of the first requests we ask is for cash or gift cards. We've, we've had, um, I think, $4,000 of gift cards come from St. George that we were able to bring there. We've had some come in from other dioceses around the country. Uh, and at the Catholic Charities website or the diocesan website, people can make those contributions. And you always need gift cards or gas cards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gas cards. Transportation is going to be an issue for the evacuees who are here in Baton Rouge in the hotels. Uh, we've already helped them get on to other places for more permanent housing because there are no shelters right now. Uh, so they are the evacuees are landing in the hotels here and we have some case managers working those needs in conjunction with the church parishes, by the way, as well, helping supply some of the uh, items that they arrived without. The old concepts of community shelters now have kind of gone by the wayside because of COVID. And so that's one uh, emergency situation layered upon another. I would say this is really the great thing about collaborating so much and making sure everyone's at the table is because in any disaster, you're responding according to the needs as they rise. And especially during the time of COVID, you're going to have to be even more creative. And so we really want to make sure that we're able to bring the, uh, the most efficient, creative, and, uh, and, and meaningful ways to serve and respond the best we can. And so that's really been uh, one of our priorities as we work together. Any closing comments? David, first you. Um, yeah, th there's a great need that a need that those needs will be evolving as time goes on, and and really, I think the important thing to remind everybody is that there's always an outpouring of goodwill during these first few weeks after a disaster. The long-term recovery is really the tough job that comes in, and this is where Catholic Charities agencies shine, because we're still working with flood victims from 2016, for example, and those cash donations help us solve those issues for the poorest who have, have had no insurance, haven't qualified for FEMA assistance, and to make sure that their lives return to some semblance of normalcy. Father Ryan, any closing comments from you? Yeah, please just continue to keep the, uh, the people in those affected areas in your prayer, you know, fast for them. Uh, consider how you can serve them, whether it's getting together a work crew, whether it's getting together, you know, a group to go over there and cook for them or just donate items. Um, any contribution to help them as they've helped us in the past. This is really what we do as a community. And so please uh, remember it's an ongoing effort. And so there's, uh, there's a lot of work to do, uh, but many hands make uh, light work. Father Ryan Hoffa, thank you for your leadership in this uh, area as the diocesan coordinator for our disaster response and uh, David Aguiar as always thank you for your leadership and all of your colleagues and your volunteers Catholic Charities. Thank all of you for watching uh, as we have uh, 
presented this program, you've seen on the screen the various ways that you can help. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your prayers. Be well, be blessed. Be well blessed.